The biggest problem Mercedes has right now is that they still think it's 2020, and thusly, the sky is falling. Of course, a lot of the world of Formula 1 in the media likes to talk about the car itself, how the W14 is the root of all of their problems. But that is something that can be fixed eventually with the W15, into something which is a little bit more workable, and a little bit more like the Red Bull. And if you think that's a really big problem, then this happens all the time, folks, in Formula 1. A car is faster than the other cars, and everyone catches up to that car. Everyone was doing that with Mercedes. But my biggest summation out of all of the stuff we've seen from Mercedes this season is that they haven't changed their mindset. They still think of themselves as champions, and they are not prepared to think any other way. And they have made themselves into this huge, big, hulking behemoth which is slow to adapt and evolve. I think we don't need to evolve. Let's rewind back to 2020, the good part of 2020, when we're just thinking about Formula One. Sure, Max Verstappen won in Abu Dhabi in the typical fashion that Red Bull often demonstrated back then. Red Bull would develop their car all the way to the end, whereas Mercedes would hold back a little bit. But throughout that whole season, the W11 was clearly the fastest car out there. And this was just yet another year of Mercedes dominance. They were clearly evolving and building upon the success that they'd had throughout all of the time in the turbo hybrid era since 2014. They lit the fire under Red Bull, as did the media. The media telling them all the time to pull your finger out Red Bull and beat Mercedes, which they would then go on to do, and everyone's going, oh no, they're beating Mercedes and everyone else. No one can win, can they? And honestly, it was very important they developed the RB16 because at the beginning of the season, that RB16 was very, very quick potentially, but it span all the time. Throughout of this, Toto Wolff and Lewis Hamilton were the kings of the sport, and it was clear that this team had everything under control. Until they didn't. Yes, of course, 2021 was a kick in the teeth of Mercedes, as we all know. They were still the best constructor. They won their eighth constructor's title in a row. Albeit because Perez was fourth in the driver's standings, which nobody seems to remember. But I suppose that was down to Bottas being particularly iffy that year too, so both teams could be considered to have had weaker second drivers than expected. The alarm bells weren't going off all that loud, but now those alarm bells they are deafening. Mercedes were then shown up to be this huge hulking mass that just could not or would not change into becoming a tight, nimble challenger. They still kept thinking they could win. It was just a matter of time. They just had to get the setup right and then everything would be fine again. But it clearly wasn't. So as you might be able to tell, my feelings towards Mercedes are going beyond the technical stuff. They still have the assets, the tools, the personnel to come up with a plan. But quite clearly, they don't have one right now because they still think it's back when they were really, really good. Their demeanor has not changed one bit. My esteem of Mercedes, the way I look at them, has changed badly. Throughout all of the years when they were dominating, when they did have a hiccup, they looked really assured, really confident, like there was nothing to worry about. They seemed under control, but now they don't. Just Many of the examples in Drive to Survive, the latest season, I know, I know many of you people are going to be complaining about it, but these are real moments. They look like a team that were just railing against everything, unwilling to blame themselves, or at least not dramatically, and instead lash out at others. That self-assuredness can be good at times, but really the way Mercedes conveyed themselves was out of pure arrogance. I'm sorry, but it's true. The Mercedes team of 2022 and 2023 has been that of a team who are drowning in hyperbole, pessimism, and unattainable goals. The team has also, albeit to a smaller extent, has pulled a Red Bull in messing up their succession plan, to the point where George Russell's place at the team is now looking very, very rocky because you're getting younger drivers coming in, such as Frederick Vesti and Kimi Antonelli, who could easily find themselves at Mercedes and George may have nowhere to go. Whereas Lewis Hamilton, he, he, he can just stay for as long as he likes and then he can leave. And all of this is leaving both drivers that they have right now and until 2025 with a degree of resentment and just a feeling of desperation to impress. They still think that they are the best and that they can fix any problem. Well, where has that got them? To the point in Brazil where they had no solution to their problems, they could have had a pit lane start to fix their situation with the setup, but they didn't know what to change. Aston Martin had a means to change their setups for Austin, and that worked wonders for them. Although having said that now, they do have a clue about what to do. What was wrong with the car in Brazil? 
a week too late. The team isn't rebalancing their expectations and are constantly trying to believe they can be race winners in a point in F1's history where they really cannot be. Unless of course Max or Red Bull has a problem which either renders their cars undrivable, they have to have a DNF, or there is something in the way like a penalty or some kind of on-track mistake. Even Ferrari recognises that them going up against Red Bull in a direct fight, that ain't gonna happen right now. Ferrari has to be a lean machine and quick to adapt. Even though they do get their strategies wrong, at least they try and think on the fly. Mercedes are only now coming to terms with the fact that they have got to keep second place in the constructors and make sure Ferrari don't get there. And they are very lucky that Ferrari have had their own battles of woes and strife and unreliability that has managed to make Mercedes life a little bit easier. Especially in the last four races, there's been some kind of calamity for both teams, which means neither team can gain a huge amount of points against the other. It's crazy, right? But you see, that's another thing. It's a little win. The fact that Ferrari are also having problems, and Mercedes need to grasp those little wins to try and find some cause for optimism, which is something they really can't seem to bring themselves to do. And this is just making them look unprofessional. This then leads to a pity party from Toto, just going, oh my god, this is the worst weekend we've had in Formula 1 in the last 13 years. And this is not making it look good for Ineos, who are one of their major shareholders, doesn't go away or find fun in their possible acquisition of Manchester United, clearly looking for chances for success in other sports that Mercedes are not giving them right now. Although, of course, Ineos claims that that's not the case. Oh, no, no, no. Even though Mercedes are very close to their first winless season in F1 since Toto became their team principal, 2011 was their last season without a win, they are still second place in the team's standings, which isn't the end of the world, even though they act like it is. They are still technically the best of the rest, and that is something they really should be embracing, that things could have been a whole lot worse. This is nowhere near what McLaren were dealing with in 2015, when they suddenly found themselves near the bottom of the constructors after being somewhat okay. It's nowhere near that big of a drop that Mercedes are having. They are still within the top three teams. And even though the W13 and W14 are their worst performing cars in their modern era, they still have a car which is consistent enough, reliable enough, with drivers who are good enough to get points on the regular. That is what has kept them from falling any lower in the constructors. And that is something they really should be taking comfort in. That they still have something which keeps them in the front running pack. They are nowhere near falling into the clutches of the midfield. Although Brazil did show an example of that it could easily happen if they don't figure things out soon. The W14 is still, over the course of a whole season, better than the MCL60. Even though the MCL60 is now the best car at some tracks. But that's mainly down to the fact the RB19 isn't being developed, so you've got to take a pinch of salt with that. So what can Mercedes do to recover from all of this, aside from changing their car completely? Easy! Stop thinking like a title winning team. All that does is create misery, depression, unachieved goals and comments from Toto every other weekend saying it was the worst weekend of their time in F1. Brazil was definitely their lowest ebb. They were not racing like a top team. They played it too safe with their setup in the wake of the disqualification. They had no plan to address it. Their drivers were left high and dry in one shape or another, and that led them to be lucky of even scoring. The pride that they have on display is becoming their biggest weakness right now, and it's leading to costly mistakes like we saw in Austin. Their floor upgrade is looking to be fairly positive, but they brought it to a sprint weekend. And what's becoming very obvious is that you do not bring fundamental upgrades to sprint weekends. You can argue McLaren didn't suffer this issue in Austria with Norris's upgrades to sprint weekend, but they knew what they needed to do for months to fix their issue. So they really had nothing to lose at that point. I know, I'm just a guy on a ladder, but I think I've got a few solutions which could help Mercedes that have got nothing to do with the changing of the car. And first off, listen to George. Think about it. George Russell spent three seasons at a team who would desperate for points all the time and would do anything to try and score them. Think outside the box. Think on the fly. Heck, we still see that with Williams with Albon, trying any solution possible to maximise the potential of their car and score points, especially at tracks where nobody thinks Williams will do well at all, like at Zandvoort, which is a very high downforce and something that Williams lacks in spades. And you get constantly that feeling that, where did Albon come from? How did he score points there? That's what's got them to P7. George is trying to bring that to Mercedes and think outside the box. But where is that getting him? 
nowhere. The Mercedes Pitbull either silences him or gives him silence, which then leads to the snippy remarks over the radio, which has led to George's reputation becoming that of a crybaby. Now remember folks, Formula One management, what we see on TV, edits those radio messages so we don't get the entire picture. Because your contempt for his potential strategies that could work is just making him out to look like a fool. And George Russell isn't a fool because Alonso wouldn't respect a fool. He very much respects George Russell Alonso. Next, get your pit stops tightened up. Sure, that doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you get a team who can rarely get a sub three second pit stop, going up against teams which can even go below two seconds on the regular, two seconds lost in the pit stop can lead to you losing potentially two positions on track. And even if you don't lose a position, the driver is going to have to work harder to either close the gap to the guy in front or pull away from the guy chasing. And that leads to the driver chewing up the tires that you just gave them. And for the longest time, Toto had been so arrogant about thinking, oh, you don't need to tighten up the pit stops. We're fast enough as it is. Well, you're not anymore, Toto. You need to claw back every second that you can get. Then stop beating yourself up all the time. Yes, seeing Mercedes act this way is galling for the fans, but the fact of the matter is, is that this era F1 has Red Bull firmly in the winner's circle, which is where Mercedes were in the previous era. I remember when Ferrari in 2005 got their teeth kicked in with the regulation changes. They went from being the all-dominant car of 2004 to being very mediocre in 2005, and Michael Schumacher was lucky to be anywhere near Alonso. He had to use his skill to get anywhere near that Renault car that year. So what Toto needs to do, instead of wallowing in the good old days about how they used to be the best and that what they're doing is not good enough, they need to accept the fact that they are not that anymore. They got their strategy wrong, they need to fix it, they need to adapt, and they also need to think outside the box and think on the fly. They need to improvise. They can't stick to one plan and that plan alone and no other plan can then be approached. Because McLaren did that for about four seasons, them constantly blaming Honda for their problems and that, oh, getting rid of Honda, that will solve their problems. And then they got a reality check in 2018 when it was very clear that the car that they had built and had been building was pretty bad. And they then had to go under a complete fundamental reset in 2019, which has seen them really achieve quite a lot of success and a much brighter future and a complete tonal shift for McLaren, going away from the clinical team of the Ron Dennis era into a much more relaxed and supportive era under Zach Brown and Andrea Stella. And of course, you've got to remember Andreas Seidel had something to do with that too. Mercedes need to transform into a svelte team who are quick and nimble, ready to answer the call and come up with solutions instead of clinging onto the past think to the future. That's going to be very difficult for Mercedes because they've known nothing but winning in the turbo hybrid era. It's a very long time since they were in 2020, 2012 and 2011, where they were clearly not the brawn team. They were just at the bottom of the front runners if they were lucky, maybe at the top of the midfield. Not many people remember those days because if you win so many times and for so long, you forget the bad stuff. And if you think I'm being really, really down on Mercedes, there is a crumb of hope here. There is a kernel of optimism. The 2026 Mercedes engine is rumored to be the most developed out of all the other teams. And that is pretty much what got them to where they were in 2014. That Mercedes engine was the best out of any of them. And that was one of the major factors in why they were so good that year. And that might be more of the same. Hey, if you got at least the most grunt out of any of the other teams, then that will serve you very well in this modern era of Formula One track design where you need very, very long straights all the time. You might be thinking that Mercedes have got a very big uphill struggle, but it's really not that bad. There are so many little things that can make their time in F1 a little bit easier. Just listen to their drivers a little bit more, think on the fly, tighten up their pit stops, and they can easily find themselves in a much more comfortable second position, a little bit closer to Red Bull. Red Bull are being very bullish at the moment, but all the teams are being for 2024. Nobody really knows who's going to be the dominant one. It might be Red Bull again, it could be somebody else. But Toto really needs to understand what it's like to lose. And I feel like this could be really good for Mercedes. These years in the wilderness, and even then it's not really that much of being in the wilderness, they're still second or third. This could be really good in rebooting Mercedes into a much more agile team and being able to find ways of beating their competition in the race instead of sticking to what they came up with before the race and not deviating. Toto really needs to understand how to lose and build yourself back up again. So he really should have a little bit of an email conversation with Zach Brown because he likes his emails. Because Zach Brown has been there throughout the entire time of McLaren being in the doldrums and now being 
somewhat good and having moments of glory this season. Now speaking of, if you want to understand why I think McLaren have finally got themselves back in the groove and in a period of glory after a time in the dark ages, you can go and watch this video next and find out more. See you there.